Hello and welcome to my SH101 restoration video. Um, there's not much to do with this one. It's mostly working. Except for the top eight keys. And that makes sense because um, this is a four by eight um, keyboard matrix. So it's four sets of eight keys. And each eight keys has one wire and then it has one wire for each set. So the same eight wires kind of repeats the second keys, the third keys and the fourth keys, but they're separated by the fact that there's one wire per group, which are the four wires. So if one of those four wires of each group of eight uh, is not connected, you'll get a whole eight keys not working. And if one of the eight key, eight wires isn't connected, you'll get the same key in every group of eight fails. So that's why you'll quite commonly find SH101s with say every every key, one key in every octave-ish um, that will also sometimes be not working. And that means that there's a wire in the, in the eight that's not working. So that problem to fix. Um, and then just a really good clean. So um, if you have a look, if you have a look here, you may not be able to see it, but it's actually really dirty. Um, not just here, but inside these channels as well. There's just heaps of gunk and dirt. It's horrible. Um, and the buttons could do with a cleaner. Um, so I'll pull it apart um, and then take the top panel and probably just soak that in a bath or something. Um, and then just clean out the channels. Um, so that's all that should need to be done. Um, so first we'll fix the keyboard and those top eight keys. Okay, so the bottom panel comes off. Um, and then we just take the key bed out. So there's three screws here. So one, two, three, and there's a screw here and a screw here. Okay so once you've taken out the screws the keyboard lifts up from the back and you pull towards the back and then up comes out like that. Um, so it's a good idea when you're servicing the SH101 um, to actually put it on a piece of foam or bubble wrap or something so that you don't damage the knobs and sliders because they quite often knobs get chipped and uh, scratched and it's most likely because people put them upside down without any protection underneath so it's a good idea to, to do that so you don't damage it anymore then you remove these springs so you just use needle nose pliers And all the springs are the same, so you don't have to worry about um, whether they go on the white or the black keys. It's just the same spring. Then you turn the keyboard upside down and just remove this plastic strip. And that allows the keys to move forward and then come out. Okay, and then for the key removal, you remove the white ones first and then the black. It's the same on every keyboard. Um, and then just give it a bit of a wipe because there will be no doubt heaps of dust underneath here. It's probably the worst thing about this keyboard, the circuit is exposed um, because whatever falls down the keys ends up on the circuit board and that's why you end up with so many problems. Okay, so if we look on the other side, here are the connectors for our 4x8 matrix. So we've got um, a connector with 4 pins at the top here and a connector with 8 pins here. So if we've got an entire 8 keys that are out, it has to be one of these 4. So one of the 4 banks of 8 keys. So one of the wires that's connected to this plug. Um, so if we turn it over we can see where that connector is. Just get a bit more light here. Okay, so we can see where that connector is. 
there's our four wires. Somewhere along the line, these four are not connecting. So it's just a bit of dirt there. But if we look under here, here, yeah, we can see that one of the wires there isn't connecting and maybe even looks like a second one is not far off from breaking either. So that's where our fault is. Um, so all we need to do is repair that track um, and usually you would just use a jumper wire from the pin here that's not connecting and maybe just rub off some of the mask at the top and solder it up there. So I'll do that now. So all I ended up doing was cutting a leg off a resistor and soldering it um, directly on top of the track. So I just uh, removed a bit of the solder mask um, to expose the copper and then just use that as a pad to put the leg of the resistor on. Uh, and the, it connects fine now. So I can put it back together and test it. Okay, so to clean the top panel really well, I'm going to have to remove all the circuit boards um, so that I don't get them wet. So it'll just be a matter of undoing all the screws. There's a set of screws on the top board and then a set of screws underneath on the bottom board and then there's this switchboard here. And the boards at the back, they just pull out. Okay, so now all the screws are removed so it's just a matter of pulling the boards out. So the back one slide out. And you've got modulation section. And the two main boards. And the, the key switch. So I'm just going to remove, uh, just put everything behind it. And these tabs for the battery clip should just slide out. Although you might need to use some pliers because they can be, oh that one was easy, but sometimes they can be quite stuck. Yeah, this one was a bit more difficult. <laughs> Alright, so that's it, it's all out. Okay, so the only thing that's left um, on this top cover is this rubber backing for the sliders which stops the dust from getting in. Um, now that's glued. Um, every so often um, to the front panel. So I'm not going to remove that because I'll have to glue it back in. Um, but that's okay, it's just rubber and it, it won't care about the water while we're cleaning. Um, so I'll just leave it in. Okay, so the SH101 top panel is plastic. So that means we can't use any solvents at all. Um, it's only soap and water for this one. Um, so we've got lots of bubbles. Here, ready to go. Um, a toothbrush, which we'll gently use for the um, the, the channels. Um, we can't use this too um, forcefully because this is made of plastic and the panel's made of plastic. Um, so with both the same material, there's a chance that it will scratch. So we've got to be really careful. Um, so I'll use a cloth whenever I can, and I might even use a thinner cloth for the channels if I think uh, it looks like I'm going to scratch. But we'll see how we go. So we're going to start with the water. So don't forget as well to get right up in the corners of all the um, slider channels. It's generally in the corners, that's where all the dirt collects. These other channels seem to clean pretty pretty well with just the cloth, but it's just in the corners of these ones that it's a bit more difficult. Once you've finished, just give it a quick rinse, make sure all the, the soap is off, and then a quick dry. We'll probably need to leave it dry um, for an hour or so to make sure all the water is um, uh, removed from where that rubber panel sits underneath. Just to make sure there's no water left when we put the electronics back in. And don't forget to use a toothbrush on the notches 
in the knobs and sliders because they, they build up with a lot of dirt and when you clean them they brighten up quite a bit. They look much much better. And there it is, it's all back together and it's really, really shiny. In fact, it's come up really well, especially with the white. So much whiter than before and the grey almost looks like a lighter grey. It's probably hard to tell on the video, but um, it does look really, really good. Yeah, that's much brighter than before. Yeah, that looks awesome. So it's a success, and all the keys work. Excellent. So it's done. So thanks for watching, and there's plenty more synths to come. I've got some big analog polys to do next. Um, some of them are in quite bad condition, so they'll be really fun. Um, so there you go. Thanks.